Live from New York, this is Spirit Matters, your daily Buck the Center podcast. Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Dal Grunka, and I'm here with our co-host, Achuta Gopi, and our tri-host, Kishore Chandra, is not here because it's Monday. He's never here on Monday because he teaches yoga on Monday mornings. But we're glad that you're here to our live Zoom studio audience and to all of you tuning out there in podcast land. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, I do. One of our chats here says that Daya looks either really tired or really allergy-ish. And I do have allergies. Happened over the weekend. I'm also losing my voice a little bit because I um, was hosting a wedding over the weekend. One uh, person got married over the weekend on Sunday and I was there. They had a sun geet on Saturday and I was hosting and allergies and voice and so if you're just listening on 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 your podcast platform and you've never tuned into our YouTube videos, don't make today the day that you start because I you might get scared and think why why would I ever do that again? But aside from that, I'm feeling good. <laughs> I love those I love those memes where it's like has like a picture of like a like a zombie, like a, like a like a person who's been dead for for a thousand years and then the caption is like you know how did you sleep and then your answer is like i slept really well why and then it shows the picture of like this like zombie guy who looks dead like oh maybe because that's how i look i'm sorry i didn't, I didn't realize i actually i am a person who really i oh those commentaries they get me every time when the people are like you look so tired and i'm like i you know thank you <laughs> thank you because i didn't know because i was just living in the <laughs> just, try, just trying to get by so when you were like i'm also losing my voice voice because and i was like were you screaming into the void abyss over the week <laughs> was so just screaming into the into the abyss <laughs> so much better than i, I was yelling at my family over thanksgiving <laughs> yeah. are you you look tired are you okay uh, I thought I thought I was doing good so far today. I'm still here. I made it. <laughs> right. I woke up. Usually, you think you're doing okay, and then somebody gives you the reality check that actually reality check of like you're, you're not doing you're not doing good. Whatever you thought was going good, it, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Please, we're worried about you. Go home. Anyway, you look bright and effervescent, dear Achuta. How are you? It's the ring light. No. <laughs> it's actually the rim light. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, I'm good. Uh, I'm I'm ready. Ready. He's ready. I'm all right. Ready. Well, we we we're wrapping up the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. We've been we've been tinkering around these last two verses, and I think I think Kishore and I even read verse seventy two, which is the last one. But we know that. Um, we didn't want to end the second chapter without you. No. And so um, we wanted to go back because we've 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 been some of us have been missing each other on a couple of these days. Um, I don't remember the last time all three of us were here. It was probably last week sometime. Um, but we've gone through the second chapter of the Gita, the second to longest chapter of the Gita. Srila Prabhupada titled the chapter Contents of the Gita Summarized because in many ways um you kind of get it all it's all there everything from arjuna's dilemma and despair and his surrender towards higher power and his admittance of his own inability to figure out life's problems on his own to um introducing the idea of teachers and gurus and surrender all the way to the identity of the soul and the eternality of our existence beyond the temporary identities we latch on to that were given by this body and this mind and identities and society to the way that that informs how we act in the world and how we move through the world and how we deal with life circumstances and the ups and downs and create a sense of equanimity in not getting too caught up or too carried away with life's um, upheavals and implosions and explosions um and even the idea of of uh dedication to something beyond ourselves 
Krishna introduces the idea of God and the idea of higher meditation in verse 61. So we got all of these good things, that and more. And um, it's all there in the second chapter. And in the second and last verse, Krishna says that if you can follow this, this path, um, then you'll never be bewildered and you can enter into the spiritual kingdom. And we talked about in that, conversation with Kishore and I about how um, I read this this quote of verses from Tracy Chapman, one of my favorite singer songwriters, who wrote the song Heaven's Here on Earth, and this idea that we're looking for spiritual transcendence like outside somewhere in the stars, but actually it's like it's right here and right now if we can just change our consciousness. So that's where we were at on on Friday and wanted to invite you, dear Chuta, if you wanted to read any of these closing verses of chapter two or share any of your reflections of chapter two before we move on later this week into chapter three. So funny, that's what I was gonna say. It's like any wrap it up takeaways from, <laughs> from any wrap up takeaways from you because I am clearly tired and <laughs> and worn out and need you to take it away. <laughs> um I, I like I like this this purport, um, and I like that Chela Prabhupada discusses that there is a glimpse of bhakti yoga, um, and this glimpse I feel like it's it's the same within Bhagavad Gita. I feel like this glimpse is nestled deep within. You have to like get through several chapters of Krishna kind of like blowing your mind and doing this thing that he really does very well which is he gives like and i know we've talked about this before but he gives these like big 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 complex uh theologies and ideas and 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 theological references and then he starts to talk about the universe and it gets so big and so big and it seems as though like arjun is about to be like okay look my my brain is gonna implode and leak out of my ears. Like, I don't know what you want me to understand about this. And then just when he gets to, <laughs> seems like every chapter, just when Arjuna gets to the brink of like, I'm never gonna understand this and it's never gonna work. Krishna like shrinks everything back down. It's like, Phew. or you could make it really simple and you could just be mine. And that's all you need to know. And it's like, it's always, it's like this, this, like almost like mushroom cloud of, of information and it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows and it looks like it's about to like, it's like, there's, there's no way that any one human or any one spirit soul could possibly handle all of this. And then Krishna shrinks it all back down. Don't worry about it. And even in this purport, Chila Prabhupada gives so many examples of people who have achieved spiritual realization and God consciousness, even at one moment. It doesn't have to be this long drawn out process where we just are confused the whole time and constantly just kind of like fumbling our way through it. He's like, or surrender can just be as easy as that moment. Like you were mm. saying, surrender can be as easy as being that present. Mm. And so I, think, I, I... <laughs> Go ahead. No, I think that um, I was having a conversation with somebody last week about <clears throat> you know, be, being at these crossroads of life and not really sure what the right thing to do is. And I think that so often we worry it's not <clears throat> life is hard. You know, we have this we have this we should we should have that. You know, that life is good brand. You know, we should start an alternative brand called life is hard. <laughs> And it'll just be a picture of my tired, allergic face on it. No. <laughs> Life is hard. <laughs> and it's, um, and, um, but life, we, we know life is hard. But what makes, I think, life hard, it's not always necessarily the physical struggles that we go through. It's, it's sometimes it's the feeling of, of, you know, we, what, should I go left? Should I go right? Should I stay? Should I go? Should I take this job or not? And I think it's not always the, the, the doing of something that's hard. It's, it's the questioning of, am I doing the right thing, which is hard. 
it's the worrying if I'm actually doing what I meant to be doing. Um, and so if there's a way for us to know that I'm actually on the right path, then I think that we we find inner strength, we find purpose, we find no matter how difficult something may be, if we know it's the right thing to do, um, it doesn't necessarily make it easier, but it makes it, it does make it easier, actually. It's not so much the challenge of something physically, but it's 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 the knowing that this is what I meant to be doing and that reassurance, because I think it's the anxiety or the doubt or the uncertainty. Am I off track? Um, am I am I going in the wrong direction? Am I acting out of ego? And I think how you're saying, like, Christians just kind of shrinks it all down and says, be live your life in a way that you could be reassured that um, you're with me and that I'm with you. Because it's it's in material, because I love the Prabhupada mentions in the purple that you're that you're mentioning. That Prabhupada says this Brahma Stiti, which is mentioned, is that not no, it's not mentioned in the words, but the idea of Brahma Nirvana, which is a spiritual kingdom. And so to be situated in spiritual transcendence means, he says in the second paragraph, not on the platform of material activities. And so not being guided by my mind, not being guided by my stomach or my tongue or my, you know, whatever it might be but being guided by a higher spiritual consciousness um, and letting that guide your way. And so I think that, that um, li I like the idea of how you mentioned life can simplify very, very dramatically um, when we use that as our, as our compass, um, because then all, all of the sense of sense of failure kind of goes out the window, the sense of like, needing to achieve, needing to prove, needing validation, the worrying about, you know, like failure itself isn't, I don't think people feel failure. People feel the sense of rejection or the sense of the feeling of failure that they have within themselves. It, um, but if we can have that inner reassurance that we're still accepted, we're still, we still belong, we still have purpose, we still have another chance, then those fears of failure kind of diminish um, and we find reassurance. And I think that's what, you know, Krishna speaks about when he mentions that one who attains this spiritual consciousness is not bewildered and can enter into the state of consciousness that is situated in spirit. And that's what I was going to also speak to is the fact that so much of our lives are predicated on this idea that if we make a mistake just one mistake that will mark the end of everything as we know it if we make one too many mistakes in school it's just the end of it as we know it if we make one too many mistakes in a relationship that that relationship is going out the window that's it they're going to leave, our partner's going to leave, our friends are going to leave, the people that we love are going to desert us. And if we make one too many mistakes, it will be, it really will be the end of the world. And all of that will be on our shoulders. And Arjuna is really looking at this situation saying, if I make this, this move, it will be the most colossal mistake I, I will have ever made. And everyone that I know will leave me. Even the people who live will reject me and it will be the end of my world as I know it. And we'll get into this, you know, more and more as the Bhagavad Gita goes on, but Krishna is kind of like, well, you do know that that is one of the hallmarks of a soul, right? Like an embodied soul is going to make mistakes it can't be the end of everything mm. because that is actually the nature of a conditioned soul we're going to make mistakes mm. we're going to get it wrong sometimes we are we're never going to be do be able to do everything right because we can't and so now how do we recover from those mistakes how mm. do we navigate making mistakes well how do we make mistakes in a way that is spiritual, in a way that is not haphazard? How do we make well thought out mistakes? 
can we make well thought out mistakes? And, and what, what does that say about us once we make mistakes? And Krishna is constantly reassuring that it makes you normal. It's all it does is it makes you normal to make mistakes. It's natural. Now we see where we go after that. How to make better mistakes. Give me a title of our new book. Um, I really appreciate that contrast of material consciousness or material approach to life is that a mistake marks the end. You know, we're taught that at every phase of life. You know, we're taught that in school, you make a mistake, you get a bad grade, your future's over. You get a, you make a mistake at work, you lose your job, it's done. You make a mistake at a relationship, you make a mistake, whatever it may be. We, we learn at every stage and phase of life that a mistake marks the end. Our mistake is going to set you back. And in spiritual life, we learn quite the opposite, that a mistake um, can in many ways propel us forward. They can humble us. They can deepen us into a sense of surrender. They can allow us to see through the thin veil of this material world and expose um, the idea of us um, being so independent. Um, and so actually it's, it's, it's those mistakes that can sometimes be our greatest catalyst forward into deeper spaces of spiritual life if we allow it to. Now, if we hold on to the ego and we hold on to that space of I'm supposed to be perfect and I'm supposed to win my way into God's favor and I'm supposed to impress all of my spiritual friends so that they like me and that's my key forward into spiritual success, <clears throat> then a mistake <clears throat> or <clears throat> a humbling is like a death. Um, <clears throat> whereas if we can start to shatter that conception and allow ourselves, and I think it becomes it becomes the task of each of us as members of a spiritual community to not let other people fall into that state of being. To remind people that it's okay. To accept people, radically accept people as they are to be able to um, imbibe forgiveness and forbearance um, and to be able to remind each other of this because it's really, 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 really hard to remind ourselves. And we need that reminders from other people to constantly create that safe container for us to rewire our system that has been so long trained to think that I need to be perfect, or at least I need to be like at a B plus, you know, like what's the grade point average, you know, what, what's the SAT score that I need to get into this university, you know, what's the resume I need to put together in order to get this job, <clears throat> what's the list of qualities this person is looking for to be in a relationship, what are your deal breakers, you know, what are your non-negotiables, and I think that we have to be able to start reminding our each other each other to help each other um come to this place of radical acceptance and um and, and i think that's that's how krishna defines in the ninth chapter he says that even if one commits the most abominable activities they are considered saintly because they're rightly situated in their determination and so it's those two things our radical acceptance and your <clears throat> or the other person's um, radical determination to continuously put the best foot forward, be humbled by it, not defend, but to um, be humbled and to allow ourselves to grow. That's my rant of the day. I feel like I got in a good rant. I, I did it. I did my rant. I agree. I agree. And, um, you know, I, I think that that uh, radical acceptance it doesn't mean that we have to be pushovers. It doesn't mean that we have to accept things that are not healthy for us. Uh, but it does mean that we can assure one another that it is not the end of the world. Sometimes we like to make it feel like it's the end of the world if we are on the opposing side of the mistake that is committed, right? If we're on the receiving end of whatever happens, we like to make it feel like it's the, the end of the world because then how else will I feel vindicated? Like how else will I feel appeased? Um, but really 
it's not the end of the world. And there are so many times, like you said, you know, from the from the minute you're in school at your most formative years, five and six, and they're like, oh, it's going to go on your permanent record. And I'm like, where is this permanent record, by the way? <laughs> and who the heck looks at it? You're going to be getting a job interview at 36. It's like, it looks like when you were five in preschool, okay. you, like, you, it needed improvement. You took two bananas for break instead of one. And we can't trust you. So, yeah, I mean, like, who who is looking at this permanent record? Where, where, where is it? I, you know, so it's, it's a very intense conditioning. But so is this material world. It's a very intense conditioning. And sometimes we hear pure devotee. And we think, okay, all that conditioning has to be completely scrubbed out and washed away, and I've got to be completely situated before Krishna can bless me and love me and give me all the things and before transcendence can even be a thought. And so, you know, I I think Arjuna is also having this like, well, then am am I not rightly situated? What what does being rightly situated even look like? Like, what, what does rightly situated even mean, Krishna? And Krishna gives all of these lofty ideals, and then he's like, or. Rightly situated just means that you remember that you're mine, and I'm yours, and we build our lives on that new uh, predication, that, that, that this is the absolute truth of our lives, and this is what we're going to work toward. You being mine, and me being yours, and that's all we can focus on. If there's one thing that we're going to focus on, just let it be that. Allow it to to sit with us, to, to, to settle within us, to take up new space in our hearts. Because I feel as though we've gone so many lifetimes fearing that we don't belong anywhere. I feel like that was a big last final statement that I've going to want to unpack. I've, I got lots of questions there. That was good stuff. I got questions like if like elaborating exactly like tell me more about what it means to be I am yours and you are mine. I want to hear more about the feeling of journeying through life for so many lifetimes feeling like I don't belong anywhere. I think that there's so many of us that feel that. And I also I also wanted to get into the personal space of where are the where are the times or what is a time where we felt like we made a mistake and that it was the end of the world. And through trying to practice some of these principles or through being reminded by, by God or another people or our inner self that we realized that it wasn't. Um, so I got all of that right as we are uh, closing out on time. <laughs> it's good. It gives us, it gives us a, a, a jumping point for tomorrow. It's all jumping good. point for tomorrow. Somebody write those things down and um uh, and uh, I like Lila Mundry said, if Bhagavad Gita seems overwhelming, just keep reading. Krishna's getting there. Kind of like if life gets overwhelming, just keep going. Krish- keep Krishna is getting there. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Beautiful. So why don't we go ahead and take this time to turn to Kimberly, our taker aware. Um, do we have another name for Kimberly? Because I'm just going with taker aware. Um, until until we get another another title for Kimberly. She's our official Take her away of the podcast because she gives us our takeaways. So um, Ball Davies is the summarist, the official summarist. I still like wrap it up, Acharya. <laughs> wrap it up, Acharya. She's our wrap it up, Acharya. Kimberly, Kimberly Maharani. What do you got for us, Kimberly? <laughs> Time to wrap it up. All wrap right. it up. Yep. Wrap it up to a nice present. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, well, taking away that it's okay to make mistakes. Um, Mistakes can actually be our catalyst for growth. We are all accepted, we belong, and we all have purpose here. And we can simplify our lives by being guided by the truth that we are Krishna's and he is ours. That was a great wrap up. Closing word, Achita. I am holding close to me that when I see other people making a mistake, 
I want to somehow have the grace to also reassure them that it's not the end of the world, especially when I feel like the mistake is I'm like if I've been on the receiving end of said mistake, I want to have enough grace and enough trust in Krishna to be able to also, okay, it's not the end of the world. Uh, my takeaway is I got to get a ring light so I don't look so tired on the podcast. I think you should keep it. It's a, it's a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> no, my takeaway very much is, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, hold on to what I was sharing at the end, the idea of, you know, so much of it is about like the things I need to remember, the things I need to do and the things that I need to, to keep in mind about not me, you know, not worrying about mistakes or feeling the sense of acceptance. Um, but I want to turn it around and how am I, how am I reminding other people of the same? How am I living my life in, in a sense of, of helping to be that, uh, giving a safe space for other people to do the same? You know, if I want to live in a world of radical acceptance, if I want to live in a world where people feel safe to make mistakes and people feel, people know that, that love means forever tries that how am I creating that opportunity for other people, whether it's the people, the close people that I know and love and, and share my day-to-day -day life with or people that new people that I'm meeting and just um, connecting with. Um, I want to, I want to remind myself that, that we create that world by giving the opportunity to other people. It's my final word and uh, love you guys so much. So grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you all so much for being here. If you like something you heard, share with a friend, let us know about it, write to us at Spirit Matters at BhaktiCenter.org. Leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. I think Apple Podcasts is the only place you can leave reviews. Spotify doesn't leave reviews. Leave us a review so that we can, a five-star one. If you got anything less than five stars, we don't want to hear from you. Um, no, I'm just joking. Whatever it is, just leave us a review. Let us know that you are there. And we love hearing from you always. Um, and just take care. Be well. And know that you're loved. You're not alone. And, and we're glad that you're here. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.